it's Alex and welcome to Vegan with a Passport. Today, I'm going to show you vegan eats on a road trip throughout Arizona and then afterwards, I'm going to show you some vegan restaurants in San Francisco. Let's go. So we're going to start this trip in Las Vegas and an 8 minute bus ride from the airport, you can find an all vegan restaurant called the Modern Vegan. And as you can see, the interior pretty much matches the name of the restaurant. For some reason, I mixed this up with another restaurant in Las Vegas and I was surprised by the prices on the menu. Despite the higher than expected price tag, I was very surprised by the size of the menu and it actually was a little overwhelming in choosing what to eat. I decided to go with a cowboy burger, which came with a pretzel bun, a homemade patty, vegan bacon, and vegan gouda cheese. And I do have to admit that it definitely was worth the price. It was one of the best burgers I have ever had. I also ordered a strawberry milkshake, and although I thought it was small for $9, again, the flavor was spot on. The milkshake reminded me of my pre-vegan steak and shake days where I would go get the strawberry milkshake from there. And I don't know what that cream ingredient is in milkshakes, if you know what I'm talking about, like that mysterious cream flavor, but that milkshake had it here and it was spot on and it was so delicious. If you decide to start driving southeast, once you pass the Hoover Dam and the Grand Canyon, assuming that you are accessing it for Williams, Arizona, eventually you will run into Flatstaff, Arizona. Also, if you happen to find yourself in town, there actually is an all vegan restaurant you can explore called Red Curry Vegan Kitchen. Red Curry is an Asian restaurant specializing in vegan Thai cuisine. Also, this was another restaurant with a gigantic menu, but I was pretty intrigued by the lemongrass tofu curry as I've never seen that as an option before. And let me tell you, it was absolutely delicious and full of flavor. The only thing I wish is that I wish the salad had come with a more flavorful dressing because it was practically just a very mildly sweet oil. Flat Stuff is a small city with an Amtrak train station where during the summer you can enjoy the shops and the restaurants in the small town center or enjoy the murals or during the winter you can actually stay at a ski resort instead. Anyway, after all of that hoobla, I eventually made it to the next establishment called Local Juicery. It is next to a Whole Foods and has a somewhat minimalist approach and Wi-Fi if you choose to work at the cafe. The cafe is a fully vegetarian establishment with a fully vegan menu. However, the items can be made vegetarian, hence, which is why the restaurant is, well, <laughs> vegetarian. There are also quite a few raw dishes and desserts you can choose from, and to my knowledge, everything is gluten-free and refined sugar-free. I decided to keep it simple and ordered this gorgeous chocolate peanut butter smoothie. However, the price tag absolutely surprised me. Also, the smoothie was yummy. It had a great combination of chocolate mixed with peanut butter, and it had a nice taste with the dates, which helped sweeten the smoothie. 45 minutes south from Flatstaff, you can find the city of Sedona, Arizona. And I don't think this is to be missed, and my video cannot capture the true beauty of this city. Anyway, so the next restaurant I visited, and I hope I am saying this correctly, is Chocola Tree. 
The restaurant is all vegetarian and focuses on wellness. Also, all the dishes are gluten free. And although you can dine inside, I recommend dining outside in the gorgeous garden where you can truly relax. The restaurant has a large menu with a lot of international inspired cuisines with a health conscious twist. Also, the restaurant makes their own chocolates and some of them are vegan. We started off with an international platter which came with a variety of chutneys, a vegan chipotle paneer, potato and corn cakes, and cucumber. And it was delicious, but I wish the serving size was larger for the price. We all also ordered dosas, and although not your typical Indian style dosa, it was still good. As for the main dish, I decided to go with an enchilada, which came with rice and a spicy tomato wrap, guacamole, corn, hot sauce, and I ended up replacing some non-vegan sauce with vegan paneer. Now while the combo does sound odd, let me tell you that enchilada was absolutely 100% delicious. Again, it didn't taste like a typical Mexican enchilada, it had its own twist on it, but it was good. So since we have explored Arizona, let's now go to San Francisco. This is actually part 2 of my San Francisco video, where this time I will show you vegan eats in Mission District, Castro District, and in Berkeley, California. Part 1 emphasizes restaurants in the downtown area and restaurants near the Golden Gate Park. If you'd like to watch that one, I'll put a link in the description and be sure to check it out after finishing this video. So the first restaurant we are going to explore in San Francisco is fully vegan and actually is a chain restaurant which originally started in Singapore. It's called Vegan Berg. The restaurant is located near Mission District and focuses on health conscious burgers made from soy and mushrooms and are served with whole wheat buns. Since I am a complete sucker for sweet food, I decided to go for the Hawaiian teriyaki burger. So without the huge pineapple chunk, the burger was absolutely delicious and when I ate the patty alone, it also had a nice flavor. However, when I ate the burger with the pineapple, since the slice was so big, the pineapple ended up being very overpowering and it tasted as if I was just eating a sweet pineapple sandwich. Also, I decided to order a vanilla soft serve and to my surprise, it was very creamy and wasn't really that icy. It was delicious and had a small hint of sweetness. It wasn't like a sugar rush in my mouth. It was just enough sweetness to curb a sugar craving. Unfortunately, during my trip, I ended up breaking the camera that I usually film on, and so I had to use my phone to film, which also has a cracked camera lens, and so the rest of the footage may not be the best quality, and due to that, I'm just going to zoom through the remaining restaurants. In the Mission and Castro District area, you can find another all-vegan Mexican restaurant called Gracias Madre. I ordered the cauliflower frito and I also ordered the bowl uno which basically is a taco salad with homemade chorizo. The fried cauliflower also came with the homemade cheese sauce. However, I really couldn't taste the cheese sauce. There really wasn't much flavor to it and the fried cauliflower had a very overwhelming cauliflower taste to it. However, I did enjoy my taco salad and the homemade chorizo was the start of the show. It had a nice savory flavor to it and it had a nice spicy kick to it. The next restaurant, which is also in the Mission and Castro District area, is Shizen, which is an all-vegan Japanese restaurant. I ordered the avocado nuguri and I also ordered a ramen dish. Although the nuguri was pretty basic, it was actually delicious and I really enjoyed the ramen. There was some mock meat in there and I'm not sure what it was supposed to intimidate but it was delicious. 
The next stop is in Berkeley, California and is an all-vegan shop in Delhi called The Butcher Sun. Here, you can purchase homemade seitan meats, cashew-based cheeses, and other deli-style dishes and desserts. And by the way, the shredded mozzarella is the best mozzarella I have ever had, hands down. Also, you can buy popular and locally based vegan snacks and frozen items. From the deli, I decided to order some mozzarella cheese sticks and although the mozzarella wasn't gooey and stretchy like a typical moss would be, those cheese sticks were so good and I totally regret not buying frozen ones to take back home. I also ordered a sweet mustard chiclet sandwich as a salad and although the chicken pieces were crunchier than expected, I still did enjoy my dish. Before catching your flight to your next destination, there actually is an all vegetarian restaurant in the San Francisco airport called Amy's. And if you are based in the USA, then yes, I'm referring to the frozen goods that you see in the vegetarian section, the Amy's brand. Although I didn't purchase anything from Amy's, they do have vegan burgers, vegan milkshakes, french fries, and vegan chili. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you're interested in part 1 of San Francisco, be sure to check the link in the description and also stay tuned for the next video where I will show you vegan food in Berlin, Germany. Until next time, bye!